Hello everyone, my name is Doug Bassett. I'm Senior Technical Instructor here at Storman Studios. And one of the things that I teach throughout all of my classes is being able to do name resolution. This is where you have a name and you want it to match to an IP address. Very, very important. And the primary service that we use to do that with is DNS. And so over here on my DNS server, you'll notice that I have a variety of records. And usually we're gonna be doing a forward lookup where you have a name and you're gonna match it to an IP address. Now, the thing about this is, is that DNS does caching. So if I go out and I resolve a name, I store that into memory until it expires. I have what is called a time to live. So if I go down here and I fire off, for example, a PowerShell command, so we'll bring up PowerShell, and inside of PowerShell, I'm gonna make this a little bit easier to see. We'll bring up the properties, and we'll go into the layout, and we'll make this, uh, we'll say 98, and we'll drop this down to about 25, and then I'll bring up the font. And by the way, if you wanna learn how to increase the resolution or the size and the font and customization of PowerShell, I recommend you come into Will Panic's PowerShell class. He shows you how to do all that stuff. You wanna have a scroll bar on one side, but you don't wanna have a scroll bar on the bottom. And what I wanna do is I wanna do an IP config, and then I wanna say uh, display DNS, all one word. And it shows all of the DNS records that we have uh, resolved recently. So for example, I have login.live.com. Now if I go out and I see, and I do something that requires DNS, like I say ping, www.ciso.com, I wanna ping Cisco, and it resolves that to AKA net. They don't want me to have to go out and query this time and time again for every time I wanna grab something from that particular website. So if I go in and I do a uh, display DNS again, you'll notice that we will have all the Cisco information, but you'll also notice that it has a time to live. That is how long I'm supposed to keep this in memory before I go out and requery it. That way I'm not banging away at their, uh, the, their particular uh, DNS server. The problem you run into is that if I swap uh, ISPs or the public IP address changes, this, uh, this time to live can be a bit of a problem. If I do like a 30 day time to live and then I change ISPs immediately for the next 30 days, anybody who has recently resolved that address, they're not gonna come back and check my DNS server to find out, hey, what the IP address is because hey, you told me to remember this for 30 days. So anytime you're gonna move from one ISP to another or you're gonna change the IP address, you need to go in and pay attention to your time to live under DNS records. So if I go out to my DNS server and I bring up a record, we'll say, uh, for example, uh, the Edge server that goes in for my email services on my Exchange uh, 2019 machine, um, I notice that it shows me the name, it shows me the fully qualified name, it shows me the IP address, but I don't have any information on a time to live. And the reason is, is that it's not displayed by default. So how do I view it? Well, what you do is, is you go in here and you go under view and you select the advanced settings. Then once you've selected the advanced settings, you double click on the record and bada bing, here is our time to live interval. Now, if you want, you can also have a default inside of your SOA record, your startup authority record. They have the defaults that you can do. This is a TTL for this particular record, but you have refresh interval, you have expiration intervals, minimum default TTL by default, it's gonna be one hour. And you would modify that so that if you are changing the IP address or you're changing ISPs, which will change the public IP address for everything, you know how long you have to wait before all that stuff changes out. So anytime you are going to be changing your, your online uh, persona, where you have to make sure that people know what the new IP address is, one well, of the first things you wanna do is you look at your TTL, make sure that you shrink that down, wait for the old TTL to expire, and then people will start resolving to that new TTL. If you do have any questions, feel free and email me. My email address is doug.bassett at stormandlive.com, and I hope to see you in class real soon. Have a good one.